In security matters, the future of email privacy. This week, the House gave its unanimous support to legislation that requires the government to get a search warrant before it examines your older emails. The bill was backed by a diverse group of organizations, including the liberal American Civil Liberties Union and the conservative Heritage Action for America. Heritage Action for America. For more, I'm joined by Chris Calabrese, Vice President of Policy at the Center for Democracy and Technology. Chris, before we get into H.R. 699, let's talk about its predecessor, the Electronic Communications Privacy Act. How did it stand up 30 years later? Well, it's amazing. I mean, the rules that govern how we protect our electronic communications were passed in 1986. So contemporaneous with Top Gun and your favorite you know, 80s music. So it's, it's amazing how well they've actually held up and how visionary Congress was in realizing that third party communications would have to be protected. But it's not surprising that at this point they do seriously need an update. And remember Prodigy? I was using that way back when in the 80s. Sure. Everything's changed so much. Now that's where this new law comes in. Tell us about it. How does it work and what type or types of information does it protect? Sure. I mean, it's really very straightforward. What it says is that the private communications that are held by third parties, so your emails, your photos held by a, in a photo sharing service, your text messages, all of those private communications should only be accessible with a search warrant. That's the standard right now that's used to search your house, and we think it should be the standard to search your digital home as well. Chris, your organization called this a win for privacy, but it wasn't exactly a complete victory. Here's how Forbes put it. The good news, the bill would require the government to get a warrant to access your email or any information you have stored in the cloud. The bad, after getting a warrant, it could still look through your online correspondence without ever notifying you. Now, why was that provision stripped out? What kind of implications will it have? And is there any chance the Senate will put it back in? Well, it was stripped out in response to law enforcement concerns who, at least as I understand it, believed it would be an additional burden for local law enforcement or federal law enforcement to actually go to you and tell you when they had had searched your communications. Obviously, we don't agree. We think that's an appropriate burden, especially if you're already getting a search warrant. But one of the reasons that we were able to, to sort of live with this provision, even though we would have liked to have had it in, is that providers are still allowed to notify you. And many providers do, in fact, notify their customers when a search warrant is served. Now, that's what I want to ask you about right now. What is the impact on major service providers like Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, or Yahoo? Well, those major providers have by and large tried to enforce a, co uh, a warrant for content rule already. There was an appellate court decision back in 2010 which said that email was constitutionally protected. And since then, at least the big providers have said, certainly in the case of email and often in the case of a lot of private communications, that, that law enforcement should come back with a warrant. And it's important to note that the, no, that hasn't been an undue burden on law enforcement. But we think that rule needs to be universal, apply to not just the big guys, but the smaller providers as well, and also have a degree of certainty so everyone knows going forward that their private communications are secure. All right, Chris, in wrapping this, this up, we talked about email. It wasn't widely used in 1986. I mentioned Prodigy. You mentioned all the great mm -hmm. shows of the day. It is a necessity today, though. So before you go, I'm curious, why did it take 30 years for this to happen? Well, we've seen a, a variety of objections, some of them you know, reasonable, some of them less so. I mean, we saw the federal civil agencies say, well, we don't have search warrant authority. What are we supposed to do? And, and we feel personally that there's a, a wide variety of tools they have to get information directly from the subjects of investigations. And those agencies, in fact, confess that they've never used this authority, at least since 2010. So once we overcame some of those objections, talked directly to the law enforcement concerns, we were able to get a bill that, as you note, was unanimously supported by the House of Representatives. And I hope we'll see quick passage in the Senate. Chris Calabrese, Vice President of Policy at the Center for Democracy and Technology. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.